What is going on you stallions and stallionettes? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we're going to be unboxing, setting up on the Xbox Series S, and reviewing the Razer Kairos. These are exclusively for the Xbox One, Xbox Series, as well as Windows 10 PC. They retail for 100 US dollars, and I gotta say, they definitely outperform that price point. Let's get this thing. Alrighty boys, over here with the Razer Kyra. Now this retails for 100 US dollars. There is also a version called the Kyra Pro and all that includes is a couple features that in my opinion do not warrant an extra hundred and fifty or an extra $50, making it 150 bucks. And that would be RGB lighting, which on wireless headphones I turn off anyway, even if it is offered to save battery life. And also Bluetooth connectivity, strictly for mobile gaming, as if you are gonna be using this on an Xbox or a PC, a Windows 10 PC, you're gonna be using a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz connectivity Connection. So on the Xbox, it automatically does that. Uh, but with this, you will need an adapter in order to do that. We will see if it includes the adapter. I just tested the Turtle Beach Stealth 700 Gen 2s. And with those, you need to buy a separate $25 dongle for use wirelessly with Windows 10, which it, in my opinion is pretty ridiculous. Now, unlike a lot of other versions of uh, Razer headphones out there, for example, the Naris, Nari Ultimates, uh, Krakens as well, I believe, this one is exclusively for Xbox, as where there isn't a second version that's for PlayStation and PC, and then a version that's for Xbox and PC. The Kyra and Kyra Pro are exclusively for Xbox One, Xbox Series, SNX, and then Windows 10 PC. So you have some lime green branding all over the box. And unfortunately, there is also lime green branding on the actual headset itself. I'm not a fan of that. I think it looks very tacky and not very classy or tasteful. Same thing when there is a lot of blue on headsets that are exclusive to PlayStation. Please just keep it gunmetal gray, silver, white. So I might not even need my unboxing knife here, but the Kyra does fe feature 50 millimeter drivers, which is pretty common. That's kind of the golden standard. Um, every once in a while, you'll find a more premium headset that has 60, 80, or even 100 millimeter drivers that look like a couple of dinner plates strapped to your head. Just a couple of huge vodonkeys uh, on the side of your head there. So Razer packaging is generally quite premium. Um, however, this is a $100 headset, so I do not know what to expect when I break into this box. But it, it's okay. So you have a very large instruction manual here. Oh, Jesus effing Christ. All right. So I don't like these kind of pamphlet style instruction manuals. I prefer a little booklet and whatnot. Um, you do have some color in there, obviously lime green because, well, that's Xbox theme color and that's also Razer's theme color. So, of course, they're going to take the opportunity to scorch your corneas with some lime green. Uh, pretty good instruction manual, though. Good font. English is the primary language. Quite, instruct quite uh, instructional and informative. Does walk you through pairing to your Xbox. A lot of other languages. You got Egyptian hieroglyphics. You got Deutsch over there. And you got some kind of uh, Da Vinci code on there as well. So it shows you where all the controls are for this bad boy as far as muting your mic and whatnot. And one of the things that I really do like about Razer headphones is that they have their controls on both the left and right. So your chat and game balance that controls what's louder, your game or your Discord chat or Xbox chat, is on one side and then your volume's on the other. Uh, for example, Logitech and HyperX and uh, like Logitech, HyperX, Turtle Beach, a lot of their models have both dials on the same side. So a lot of times you think you're adjusting the volume and you're actually turning your buddies down in Discord. So that's frustrating. Not a real Razer product unless you get the stickers, boys. You gotta get these holographic stickers. I'm telling you, these things are premium. So of course they have their slogan, uh, their marketing slogan plastered all over the cover here, by gamers for gamers. Uh, packaging itself is just some cheap cardboard here. You're not gonna get any laser cut foam with these bad boys or anything. Which is surprising because a lot of Razer's more premium products um, are packaged muy caliente. Here you do have a little pouch here, a little baggie if you will. Uh, this thing feels, again, packaging not great here. It feels really cheap. But in here you have a nice cable. It is braided. This is a six foot cable with a rubber tie back. It is Razer branded on each side and you do have a little dust cover to keep dust and debris out of the, the schnitzel or the urethra tip of this here um, cord, which is braided by the way. It's not their Hyperflex cable like you're gonna get on some of their gaming mice, but it is braided, very nice. And then you do have a little bit of uh, foam down in there as well to keep your headphones 
uh, not getting battered by vibrations on their truck ride over to your house. So that's very nice. As for the headphones themselves, the PS de Resistance, boys. I'm not liking this packaging. It's just like this little papery material with a little bit of double-sided tape on it. But it is what it is. As long as the product's good, I guess I can give the packaging a little, a little leeway, right? All right. Update your headset's firmware. So that is the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pair this up to the software for this. Um, and hopefully that's the Razer Synapse 3 application because I already have that on my PC due to already having a lot of Razer devices. Um, hopefully it's not a mobile app. I'm not a big fan uh, thus far with my experience with mobile applications controlling headsets. So we're going to update the firmware to make sure we're getting the latest drivers and support. We're going to pull this off of the microphone here. All right, so again, cosmetically, I'm not a fan of this lime green all over there. You can remove these ear cups uh, by pulling them off like that. I'm starting to peel that one off, but I don't want to do it. Um, and you can replace these with some aftermarket ones. But comfort-wise, these feel incredibly good to the hands, very squishy. They have like a memory foam style material in there. And also, this material is specifically designed to keep your ears from sweating. It's kind of a moisture wicking. Uh, I don't believe they have any cooling gel or anything in there, but it's kind of a uh, perforated material. It's gonna keep your, your big old ear holes from getting sweaty in a long gaming sesh. So that's really good. The headband also does feel good to the touch. However, it just, it's, it's very narrow. It stops here. So it's gonna be right on the, the top of your dome. But right here, this is hard plastic and I, I feel like this is going to dig into my temples and the top of my head a little bit, but we'll see. You have a big Razer logo on top here. The plastics do feel pretty cheap and chintzy, not going to lie about that. But again, $100 headset, and they probably spent the majority of their production costs in the drivers, the ear cups, and then hopefully the microphone. Um, as a lot of people that watch my videos probably would like to get into streaming or at least screen recording um, their gameplay on Xbox or PC and then making YouTube videos. And... If you don't have a condenser mic on a boom arm, you're just going to be using the built-in microphone on your headset and, you know, having a good quality headset uh, that is not removable. I tried to give it a good yoink here. almost broke the suckers. Um, that is going to be there indefinitely. That does not pull out. Neither do I. And uh, this thing is incredibly flexible, so you can bend it around. You generally want to have it curved in towards your mouth, uh, generally really close to your mouth, not right up in to where you're <laughs> sucking on it while you're gaming, but pretty close. You do also have a little windscreen on here. Um, that is very, very nice. And we are going to keep that on. I think that will help with a lot of the, the pops on your P's and also the harshness on your S's. So it's kind of like a little pop filter for your microphone. So that's very, very nice. Lime green razor logo on the sides there. Let's go ahead and pop these bad boys on my noggin. They do swivel. There is no uh, snapback or resistance or tension in there. They just swivel. Uh, as for the controls, you do have the Xbox and PC pairing button right here. So just like pairing a controller, you'll press this, then press it on the Xbox, and it will pair up just like a controller. You have your chat and game blend here. Down is for the chat, and up is more game volume. And I do not like these infinitely spinning wheels that just spin and spin uh, till the end of time. I like them to bottom out so you know, okay, that's 100% game volume. That's 100% chat volume. Then put it right there in the middle with a nice distinct um, step in there that clicks into like the 50% mark. This just spins and spins. Kind of frustrating. On the left ear cup, in addition to your little bendy dongly dongle boy, you have a USB-C connector for charging and firmware updates. You do have a power button and then you have your volume up and down as well as a mic mute. Now I do kind of like this design instead of a button or some kind of weird haptic doohickey or something. It's just a toggle switch that you switch up and down. Now, granted, this microphone will not illuminate red to let you know that you're muted, but if you know, uh, you know, in the up position, that is muted and down is on, um, there is a visual cue, green for go, red for dead, but you're not gonna be able to see that when you're wearing it, so just memorize that up is muted and down is hot mic. Let's go ahead and pop these on my big old skull, boys. Actually, I have a kind of a small head, small brain. Okay, incredibly comfortable. That is my first just just, just d verbal diarrhea, my first thoughts here. Super comfortable. The ear cups are... The drivers aren't pressed up against my earlobes. 
this material that they have feels very good. It's not very smooth to the skin because it's not leatherette or anything like that, but it is that perforated material, which I can easily tell is very well ventilated and will keep your ears from sweating, which is good because if you're gaming for hours, hours, um, your ears are going to get hot and sweaty. So I feel like these are going to mitigate that pretty darn well. Now, the headband, like I had mentioned, doesn't really seem to be an issue, which is good because it's just that thin little piece of padding, but it seems to get the job done, ladies. All right, have your mic just like that, bend her out of the way. Now, so I don't have to have it extended at all because I have a pea brain, but if you have a big old noggin on you, a big old bowling ball, extending it feels okay. You have distinct steps in there, a little ASMR for you. It does seem to hold position quite well, but this is all plastic in here. It's not aluminum or anything like that. So this could be a point of failure, uh, especially if you drop the headphones or something. But overall, um, they feel pretty durable. I don't hear any creaks or moans and groans right now. I didn't bust them yet, so that's good. You do also have a little silica packet here. Make sure you dispose of that correctly. There's a trash can down there. I didn't just throw it on the floor. I do have a dog around here and I don't want her to die. So that's pretty interesting. In order to get your drivers installed, you need to type in this website into your URL. That is razor.2 forward slash Kyra FW and press enter. It doesn't even take you to a website. What it does is pops up a menu here with a driver install. We're gonna go ahead and save that to the desktop. Ugh, set the mood lighting so you guys can share my screen with me over here. So you get this little pop-up. It says, please note during the update, all running Razer applications will automatically shut down. Awesome. So my Synapse 3 will shut down, thus rendering all of my uh, Razer peripherals useless. If you're using a laptop, make sure that bitch is plugged into a power outlet. Awesome. Next. I was like, I know I'm not plugging this cable in incorrectly. It's USB-C. It can go in either way. It can go in uh, the front door or it can go in the back door. Just gonna plug it into a 2.0 port in the top of my tower. There is a 3.0 port up there, but that's not gonna matter for updates. An update is required. Uh, firmware version I'm on is dot 13. Latest version is dot 14. Let's upgrade. Congratulations. Your headset has been updated to the latest firmware. Close. And it's not gonna be polite enough to relaunch the Razer Synapse 3 application, so I'll do that myself. In the living room here, boys. Got my assistant over here. Prettiest girl this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Angel Face. All right, sweet. So now it says headset assigned. You do not need to hold down or uh, you don't need to hold down or long press the pairing button. You just press it once. This green button will start flashing. Then you press the sync button on your Xbox Series S over there. Uh, and it pairs up quite seamlessly. As you see, I now have a headphone icon. Hopefully you guys can see that over there. A headphone icon showing me about 85% battery life. I wish they had a battery percentage on there instead of just a, a visual bar, but hey, that's a little nitpicky. What's not so nitpicky and is kind of a big deal is I just realized that not only is the chat and game dial wheel infinitely spinning, but so is the volume. So you're just constantly spinning, wondering when you're at 100%, wondering when you're at 50%. Granted, when you get all the way to 100%, it does give you an audible little beep to let you know you're capped out. But still, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to feel, you know, okay, I'm at 80%, I'm at 50%, okay, I'm all the way down. Uh, instead of just having a wheel that constantly spins. I personally don't like that, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of you guys probably don't like it either. All right, boys, so a couple things to make a quick notation of. This does come with a two-year warranty. That's okay. Two years is better than one. However, a lot of the competitors out there, I've noticed, Logitech, Corsair, HyperX, uh, SteelSeries, a lot of the headphone manufacturers actually offer a three-year warranty. So that kind of sucks if you're at the two and a half year mark and these bite the dust on you, your SOL. Also, according to the documentation here, in order to use this on Windows 10 wirelessly, you do need to buy that $25 adapter. So that's kind of frustrating and that kind of seems like that's becoming the norm now with these wireless headsets that are specifically for consoles, either Xbox or uh, PlayStation, is that you have to get a separate wireless adapter for them, which is ridiculous because my Razer Nari Ultimates that I bought two and a half years ago come with a dongle built into the ear cup that snaps out a tiny little 2.4 gigahertz dongle that you can plug into PC or the front of a PS4 or PS5 and they just seamlessly pair up. So why headphone manufacturers are getting away from that to try and get you to buy an additional uh, add-on to monetize you some more on the back end, I personally don't like it as the general consumer and it's, it's not good. So in order to get through your equalizer presets as there are a couple here, you have default, which is a completely balanced equalizer bar. So obviously all the frequencies are kind of flat. You have bass boost, which sure enough is 
boosted in the base region. You have a FPS or first person shooter mode, which is most suitable for hearing footsteps sneaking from behind. That's literally what it says. It's very, a lot of these manufacturers try and like appeal to gamers where they're like, you got to get the competitive edge by hearing the footsteps and reloads down the hallway and stuff like that. It's like, just tell me that it's boosting the mid range. Like I get what I'm going to use it for, but I noticed I forgot to put my RGB lighting on my uh, controller over there, you know, give you guys a little, little visual stimulation back there. So it is indeed an application for the Xbox, so that is good. All right, so by default, you have profile one, and then you can also create new profiles. We're gonna go ahead and edit the stock profile over here. So you have your audio equalizer, awesome. So this is an actual equalizer, unlike the Turtle Beaches sitting over there that I just reviewed uh, the other day. Those were literally, it just said treble, bass, and uh, voice, and, which is mids, of course, but uh, this actually has low, low, mid, 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 high, mid, uh, and you can adjust it between Z, uh, negative 10.5 to 12 decibels. So that's really cool. And by default, obviously it's gonna be a very flat line. Bass really cranks that bass up. Uh, FPS, this is gonna boost that mid range so you can hear footsteps a little bit better. And also this will help with dialogue too. If you're having a hard time hearing the, the story, the dialogue from your game, this will help with that. And then custom obviously over here, you can have full control over these bars here. So we're gonna start out with default. I am gonna try all these modes. So at the end, when I give you guys my final thoughts, I can tell you guys which mode from my experimentation and testing is the best mode for obviously getting the uh, most accurate, crisp, clear sound out of these bad boys. Microphone equalizer. So you also have an equalizer for the microphone. Again, we're gonna leave this on the completely flat default, but you have a broadcast mode over here. That might be good to boost your low and high frequencies a little bit. Uh, you have conference, which boosts up the mid range and boost, which I'm assuming, yep, cranks up the mids really high, and then custom if you want to adjust it that way. We're gonna mess around with uh, default. And then also you do have mic monitoring over here, uh, which I am gonna deactivate. Oh, cool, it actually does have a percentage up there in the top right corner. It's 63% battery juice, so that's, that's good. I do appreciate seeing a percentage on there. And then you also have a couple of options for your microphone as well. You can do a mic boost, which will raise up all of your volume and then you have a voice normalization which will basically try and take your loudest sounds and your quietest sounds and kind of bring them into the same the same range so everything's just one consistent volume uh, so if you're somebody that rages a lot and yells and then you talk kind of quietly this will help balance that out for you and again you can turn mic monitoring on and off um, i personally want it deactivated i don't like to hear myself um speaking into my headset and then you have power saving features as this is a wireless headset uh, I would like this to turn off after, yep, the very lowest, 15 minutes. You know, if you're not using your headset, there's no audio coming through the drivers, uh, it's wireless. You want to save as much battery life as possible. So I have the mic monitoring off right now, and I have to say if this is actually what my voice sounds like, it sounds very, very good. There's a lot of, a lot of times with these headset mics, it sounds very high in the treble to mid range, and then you get zero bass response in your voice whatsoever. So it just doesn't really sound very natural. It sounds more like you're a robot or you just have the voice of a 13 year old, which is fine. If you are 13, you have this headset, it makes you sound like you're seven. So uh, we don't want that boys. We want a very accurate sound, especially if you're gonna be streaming to Twitch or something directly from your Xbox, which I do. And I do have a tutorial on this channel as well how to get set up streaming directly from your Xbox One, uh, your directly from your Xbox Series S or X. All right, guys, testing, testing. This is with the Razer Kairas, the Razer Kairas. Testing, test, test. This is an audio check with the Razer Kyra, the Razer Kyra. How do I sound, boys? Could I stream like this? All right, another quick pro tip or bro tip, if you will. You want to come into the settings each and every time that you get a new headset because this kind of does default. You're going to open up with the Xbox home button, go all the way to the left, go down to settings. And then from there, you're going to go to volume and audio output. And then over here, uh, headset format. And you're going to play around a little bit, play with it a little bit, boys. Try the different equalizer modes with stereo uncompressed and also Windows Sonic for headphones. Dolby Atmos and DTS have to be specific headphones that say on the box they support that. Generally, if it's an Xbox headset, it's most likely gonna support Windows Sonic because sure enough, you know, Microsoft, Windows, Microsoft, Xbox, they kind of just bake that into their hardware as their default uh, virtual surround sound software. It's okay. It's not as good as uh, Dolby Atmos. DTX is okay. I'd say it's about um, on the same level as 
Windows Sonic from my experience testing headsets and whatnot. But generally, in my experience, Windows Sonic sounds pretty good. Um, but we're going to test both here, and I'm going to give you guys, uh, during my conclusion, my final thoughts, where we're back over there, where we're over there on my PC, um, I'll be able to let you guys know what equalizer mode I preferred, as well as Sonic on or Sonic off. Alright, you guys, over here at my PC, I've been playing with the Razer Kairos for a few hours here, and I gotta say, these are actually pretty doggone impressive, I'm not gonna lie, especially for the $100 price point. I'm gonna do my best to not compare them to the X700 Stealth Series by Turtle Beach, with a, which I just tested. Um, that is a $150 headset, and I have some things to say about the the price difference and the performance difference between these two. Um, but that is going to be a video for another day. I'm going to do an in-depth comparison shootout, if you will, between these two headsets here. But I will say, these sound phenomenal. I do have some tips for you guys to make them sound the best that they possibly can, as I did a lot of testing with Windows Sonic on and off as well as the different equalizer modes on board this bad boy here. So first of all, getting the pros. So right up front, the comfort. Uh, I was a little bit worried that there isn't a whole lot of padding. As you see, it's just a little narrow strip in there. Um, I didn't feel any pressure whatsoever, whatsoever on my temples. The clamping pressure, if you want to call it that, was very, very minute. I didn't even notice it. The ear cups are also very comfortable. The material isn't very slick or smooth to the skin but it does do a great job of dissipating heat. I never got sweaty in the ears or anything like that, which is awesome. The sound quality is very, very good, especially for a $100 pair of headphones. I was actually supremely impressed. So the best sound that you're going to get out of these, in my opinion, I did a lot of testing, switching through modes and whatnot in different scenes. I was kind of boring. I actually played through the same mission of Modern Warfare three times over, just so I could hear the same scene over where there's your teammates yelling, uh, off to the right of you and then you've got explosions off to the left of you so I could get a good stereo spread and everything and get a good comparison here So I will say this right now The bass boost mode in my opinion is the best it looked on the equalizer like it had the bass really drowning out and overpowering the the mids and the treble Not really the case you could clearly hear the dialogue of your teammates and whatnot you could also hear uh, high frequencies as well but the bass uh, with that bass boost mode on actually makes the headphones feel a lot richer and more full-bodied uh, where it does actually tickle your ears a little bit from the bass which is surprising because they're only 50 millimeter drivers and this is a hundred dollar headset but they really do uh, vibrate your ears during loud explosions and gunshots and stuff like that especially when you have like a shotgun or something like that um, it sounded very very good I was actually very very pleasantly surprised so the best audio quality, in my opinion, was bass boost mode on with Windows Sonic on. Now, I will say, turning, there's a train really choo-choo-choo in his horn out there. I live about 1.7 miles away from a train yard, and every once in a while, they like to run trains on me when I'm trying to make a YouTube video. But you know what? We push on and we overcome. So these headphones also push on and overcome the competition. I will say that the windows sonic mode off you do get a little bit better stereo spread so if you're going to be using these in a competitive multiplayer setting i would say leave windows sonic off you're not going to have that virtual surround sound experience where you hear crickets off in the distance and whatnot like that but you are going to get better stereo spread as far as pinpointing enemy footsteps and also um just very accurate sound with no kind of software pumped in artificial sound. Now with Windows Sonic on, it makes it more of a movie experience where you're gonna hear everything and it's gonna be so in depth and whatnot. But, so I will say you do get a little bit more crisp, distinct stereo spread and situational awareness with the Windows Sonic off. However, I will say I'm gonna leave Windows Sonic on. Personally, for my personal preference, it's gonna be bass boost equalizer mode with Windows Sonic on. I think that sounded the richest, most full bodied and most accurate and uh, I could still get enough of a stereo spread to where it wasn't like a big bowl of audio soup to where I couldn't, everything was sloshed together and I couldn't pinpoint enemies. Um, and it did sound really, really, really good. I have tested headphones that are substantially more expensive than this in the two to $300 mark. And I've got to say, these literally do hold their own with those. So pretty impressive. Now onto the cons because nothing's perfect. And, uh, these, oh, 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 also also, one more pro, the microphone sounds very, very good. So uh, there was a little bit of popping or clipping. Uh, so I, for future use of it, I will move, bend the uh, arm out a little bit to move it just a little bit further from my mouth, maybe about a half inch away from my mouth, a uh, half extra inch away from my mouth. But it did sound very, very good, very clear. 
very accurate. You easily could uh, stream or screen record and make content with just the microphone right here without needing to plug a USB condenser mic like this into the front of your console. So very, very good overall. Now onto the cons because nothing's perfect and these headphones certainly aren't. First of all, uh, two-year warranty, Vice 3. All the other competitors have three on their headsets. So that, that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to have these bad boys for the long run. Two, uh, I don't think they cosmetically look very good. This lime green on here, not a huge fan. Now what you can do is either spray paint or just Sharpie over these lime green logos here, or these don't really bother me too much, but the lime green on the ear cups, that is an easier fix. They do sell aftermarket ear cups. Uh, there's companies out there. I think they're about eight to $10. I'll have those linked in the description below, just some all black ones. Um, that have also very premium materials like memory foam and cooling gel that are all black because that lime green trim, it's just a little too much for me. And as for the headband, the only thing you could really do with that is to pull this section out and to use some kind of a dye on it and dye it uh, black. You could spray paint it. I would not recommend that, that, that because you're always going to have that smell of spray paint on there. And it's also going to wear off over time anyway, because it's a soft fabric and it's rubbing your head constantly. So um, if that doesn't bother you, then that's not a con. But to me, they just look really tacky looking like that. Also, speaking of tacky, they do feel very cheap and chintzy, like the plastics on them and everything. Um, but I, I think overall, the durability is going to be fine. I don't see these breaking uh, as I flex the heck ever living crap out of them. Um, <laughs> I don't see them breaking. It's just they feel a little bit cheap and chintzy, but they're also very light because of that, which could be seen as a pro because you don't get any like head fatigue or anything. Also a con is that the dial wheels are infinitely spinning. They just keep spinning forever. Um, as where I'd like to, to have them have a lockout at the very top and the very bottom of the volume. That to me just makes sense. Granted, you do get a little audio beep at the very uh, hundred percent mark. Um, but still, Ooh, a couple more pros that I forgot. I also do like how easy it is to pair to the Xbox. It's very seamless. It just pairs up like a controller. And whenever you turn on your Xbox and turn on your headset, they're just automatically paired up like a controller. So that's really cool. I also really do like the fact, fact that it has an application built into Xbox where you can quickly just press the home button, go in there and switch your equalizer as where I know I said, I'm not going to compare them to the turtle beaches, but I just tested a pair of headphones, a nameless pair of headphones here the other day that you had to have a cell phone app where you had to unlink from your Xbox, link via Bluetooth to your phone and go into a really crappy phone app that barely worked half the time and then link back up to your Xbox every time you want to change something. So the fact that it has a built-in app on the Xbox, that is a huge, huge plus. I also do like the way the microphone mutes that instead of it's, instead of a button you push in, it is a um, a scroll that you click up or down. So you just memorize, okay, up is on, down is off, and then you're good. You can just touch back there and be like, oh, I'm pressed all the way up. I'm, I'm live right now. I'm hot or whatever. So that, that's really nice. Oh, nice. They just turned themselves off because I haven't um, played with them in about 15 minutes, which is what we set it to. So that feature works. Saving battery. I like that. I also do like the fact it is USB-C. I feel like most modern d devices, most current controllers and headsets that are coming out for the current generation. So Xbox Series S and X and PS5, they're all going to USB-C, which is it's, it's the way to go. So overall, I have to say my final thoughts, my verdict on this. These are very, very, very good at three varies. Um, and also not sponsored by Razer or anything like that. Very good headphones. I will say that right now. Uh, the audio quality is phenomenal. They're super comfortable. The aesthetics, again, you can do a, some light modification to them, like changing the ear cups and taking a Sharpie to those side logos. Um, can't do much for that headband though, honestly, that you're just going to have to uh, just deal with that lime green. But other than that, I mean, mic quality was great. You could actually stream like that. And I thought the audio quality was good enough to where I'd, I'd acceptably stream directly to Twitch from that headset. Yeah, so overall, I'm very satisfied with these. They are linked in the description below. That takes you to an Amazon landing page. That is an affiliate link. You will not pay an extra cent for your purchase. However, I do get a small portion of the commission, which does support the channel and definitely encourages me to keep making review videos like this. If this video was beneficial for you guys, you enjoyed it, got some useful information out of it, liking the video helps it to get seen by more people as the YouTube algorithm does me no favors on my channel, my little pissant channel. So like it, helps it to get seen by people. Subscribe for more gaming peripheral reviews like this. I do keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, etc. I also do tutorials helping you get set up on Twitch, Facebook gaming, and a lot of PC related tutorials as well. 
and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos come online, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.